We're about to talk a little Wake Forest football. As all of you know, they are here in Nashville Saturday, 11 in the morning, to take on Vanderbilt. Their play-by-play voice, Stan Cotton, has been there for the last 24 years, went to the University of Tennessee, and that's where I got to know him when both of us were in college. Stan, we were young and thin, and it looks like (laughs) one of us has stayed that way, and that is you. How you doing? George, I'm great. Great to talk to you. You're the one with, you know, my hair's turned uh, a little bit loose, but mostly gray. Yours is still dark, I see. And uh, I, I don't know how you do that, but it's been what you and I started messing around 40 years Early ago eight, yes. in that in that ballpark. But uh, uh, anyway, a lot, a lot of I don't know if it's water over the bridge. I don't know what it is. Under, but, uh, in between. A few, so- a few decades have passed, but it's great to hear your voice and see your face. Same, same here. You were one of those people that grew up in the shadows of John Ward. Mm. What, what did you kind of take from him to go into your career? You know, that I get asked that a, a lot, George, and it's, you know, it's, it's a great question. But, you know, I was one of those guys. I wanted to play ball. I, I, when I was a young man, it wasn't that I was you know, going to be a broadcaster or anything like that. I wanted to be a ball player. And uh, played on a really good high school team at Farragut with a uh, long time Dallas Cowboy Bill Bates, obviously, and a, and a great Tennessee volunteer. And, you know, Bill and I used to, you know, in high school and, and before that, we used to talk about, you know, just playing football, running through the tee and all that kind of stuff. So I, you know, as a young man, I wanted to be a football player. But, uh, and, and obviously growing up in Knoxville, everybody was, was crazy about the Tennessee volunteers. Um, and so, you know, back back in those days, in the 60s and the 70s, there weren't that many games on television. So we all listened to, to John. Uh, and to make a long story short, you know, I listened to all those games. And then when it came for my football career to be over because of a bunch of knee injuries and I got into media and then to specifically play by players like all those years of listening to John, I didn't know it at the time, but they were really my only preparation really i remember it was 1980 uh the week before i did my first game at carson newman college about 30 minutes up the road from uh, from knoxville uh bob kessling was still as a good friend of mine and he was spotting for john at that time i said bob i gotta do a game next week i have no idea help me <laughs> yeah yeah can i just stand in the vol network booth uh, and kind of hang out be a fly on the wall and kind of see some of the the goings on in there. And he said, sure. And, and, you know, John was very gracious and let me do that. Um, And that, by the way, was Tennessee, Georgia, Herschel Walker, that game. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but anyway, the next week I was in the booth myself calling games. I've been doing it uh, 40 plus years now. So, um, but, but again, I I didn't know it at, at the time, but all those years of listening to John, when all of a sudden I was the guy behind the mic, that's just kind of, you know, that was, the foundation that I had. And I'm not, I'm not sure you could pick anybody else to ha- have a better foundation built around than John Ward. Oh, it doesn't get any better. And, and no. one of the things that a lot of people don't know, you, me, Mike Keith, he helped a bunch of young guys and he never really let that get out there. But anytime you would ask for help or advice, man, John was there. Yeah, you know, and John, a very private person. Uh, I grew up as a young man in the same neighborhood. We, we lived in the same neighborhood. And uh, so I, I got to know John over the years in a lot of different ways as a kid in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, and then as, as someone in the media, obviously, when I got into that. And uh, but, you know, very private person. And uh, uh, but but he he did so much. For me. He used to write me uh every now and then i would get a note in the mail a handwritten note from john uh, hey i was in the car heard a game did great whatever uh he was just very uh uh giving of himself and and he he knew i think how much notes like that uh would mean to young folks who were trying to do what he did and and you know I, i i can't ever repay those special times with with john and uh, but he was, he was one in a million now, as, as all of us Tennesseans know. He was the best. Mm. And give us the, the news that got out today about Sam Hartman. 
What can you tell us about what's been going on? Is he really going to get to play beginning to end if if he's healthy Saturday? Yeah, I think he's going to start. Uh, and and that news broke. I, uh, Wake Forest had its uh, – Coach Clawson had his weekly press conference today. He always has it on a Tuesday. And uh, on my way to campus, it, 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 it broke that uh, not only was Sam going to be available, but uh, that, that he would start the game. Uh, and, and he is completely cleared to play. I assume that he'll, he'll, he and, and Wake will approach this game like, like any of the other games he started in his career. And I don't think there are any limitations uh, on him. He's been working out with the team. He's been around practice a lot um, all fall camp, but apparently the last several days, uh, he's been working and throwing, and and I, I think he's probably the, the type of player, George, that it gets kind of like riding a bike. He gets back up there and and uh, shakes most of the rust off, and and just goes after it uh, full tilt. We'll we'll see uh, on Saturday. Uh, it'll be his obviously first game. Didn't didn't play last week against VMI, so uh, I imagine there will be a little rust, but 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 who knows? That'll be part of the the, the story, right? Uh, during the ball game with with uh with Vanderbilt but uh it's great to have him just healthy number one quite honestly I mean anytime you get you know blood, blood clots like that it, it can get kind of squirrely in a hurry so good thing is that, that that Sam's healthy uh and you know Wake will get not only their offensive captain back one of their captains back in Sam Hartman but linebacker Ryan Spenda will, will also be back after having to sit out last week because of uh, a targeting penalty in the Gator Bowl <laughs> last wow. week. So the Deeks get a couple of really good players back on Saturday, and that, that never hurts. Stan Watson will take over. Watson Brown will take over here in just a second. But I want to ask this. Dave Clawson's job that he's done there, to me, has gone under the radar nationally. What button or buttons has he pushed that have gotten you all to an 11-3 and a year ago, a Gator Bowl, and a pretty darn good football team? Yeah, I think probably more than anything, George, I think Dave understands the special kind of animal. And it's very similar at Vanderbilt. You guys, not, you guys know this. It takes a special person to get into Vanderbilt, to get into Wake Forest uh, and, and play at the SEC or the ACC's highest level. And I think Coach Clawson's figured that out. Um, and he, you, you know, Wake Forest, obviously a very, very small school. And I think he uses that to, to his advantage. It's, it's not – um, something that you can, you kind of hide. I mean, he goes in and talks to moms and dads about the kind of degree that your kid's going to get if he comes to Wake Forest, the kind of football he'll be able to play, uh, and the teams against whom he'll he'll play. So um, he he has figured out the, the the guy that he can get in school, the guy that he can uh, keep in school, and the guy that compete at, at a high level. And he's found a lot of those guys the last several years. The last three or four, I think have probably been his his best recruiting years. Um, Wake is as deep probably now as it has been in his tenure, which is year number nine right now. Um, but, I mean, they just he's a smart guy now. Uh, he, he really is. He's a Williams College guy, played two sports there. Uh, and so he, he understands the academic world uh, and, and then how to mix that with, with, with high-level uh, athletes. So that, that's probably his, his recipe. And it's worked pretty well for him so far. Oh, I'd say it has. Watson, say hello to Stan Cotton. Stan, thanks for coming on with us. And you bet, uh, Coach. How are you? I'm 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 doing great. Um, I've said coming into the year, I don't think there is any quarterback in college football that means more to his team than Sam Hartman to Wake Forest. And uh, I just see it in plays that he makes, but I also see it in leadership. It, it's you can see everybody cling to him when it's time to make a play. Uh, he's a poised kid that that just absolutely goes through the whole team, and he's tougher nails, which absolutely goes through the whole team. Is that the way? And you've been covering it for for these years. Is that the way you see it? Am I overdoing that in some way? No, not at all. You've got Sam Pegg pretty well. He's a great guy in the locker room, number one. And I think probably you tell me, Watson, more than any other position, uh, if your quarterback's not a popular guy, that that's that's not a good thing. And 
uh, but he's popular because he's selfless, right? And, and he's, he's willing to do uh, anything and everything that the coaches have asked him to do. And uh, he, he's just a good unifier. Um, and, and again, that, that, that's always good to have in the locker room. And uh, he's a hard worker. He's, he's kind of a, you know, gym rat, if you will, of, of the football team. They're early, they're late. Um, and, and is, is a guy that has a very short memory, makes a bad play, moves on to the next one. Um, so he's just, he's just a good leader, good citizen, comes from a great, great family, really intelligent guy. And I think, uh, understands very clearly what Dave Clawson and Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, want of him and expect of him. Uh, you know, it's a unique offense that, that that they run at Wake Forest. And, and you know, he's been around a long time now. And so he, he gets it. He understands it. And, you know, so much of what Wake Forest does comes after the snap of the football. And so he's he's a guy that's, that's able to make those split-second decisions, make the right choice. Uh, more times than not. And I, I think you're right. He's he's very, very important to this team, although Mitch Griffiths was terrific last week against VMI in his first uh, start. Um, but, but Sam Hartman's a proven winner. He's a proven leader. Uh, he's an old guy. He's been around a fourth year junior now. And, uh, you know, this is his team. Uh, and and I, I look forward to having him back uh, on Saturday. Uh, the last thing about Sam, stand to me, I give – Coach Clawson and his staff, an unbelievable lot of credit. And I think this offense personally was put together and built around Sam. And I think that they knew what they had. And uh, and I think they couldn't be using him any better to me, Stan, because he everything he does, he looks natural in doing it. And so many offenses don't let the quarterback do that. And that's what I see – so I personally give the staff a lot of credit in building it around Sam. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you talked about, you guys have talked about Coach Clawson being kind of uh, under the radar. I think Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, is uh, he's he's a genius now. He he This is his offense that he's really put together, and uh, he recruits the quarterbacks, uh, and he knows exactly what he wants, the, the type of athlete, the type of player, uh, the type of young person that that it's going to take to to be successful in in uh, in the offense and and without question Sam Hartman is is the perfect guy and as we saw last last week Mitch Griffiths and I think Mitch is going to play a lot of football at Wake Forest in the future um, he was terrific last week and looked an awful lot like some of the other quarterbacks that Ruggiero and Clawson have recruited to, to be in this offense. So I think your point's well taken. Uh, I think Sam is the perfect guy for, for this offense, for this team, and the way that Coach Clawson and Coach Ruggiero want to use him. He uh, he doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He, he, he really doesn't. He's not perfect. No quarterback is. But uh, uh, he, he he rarely makes a mistake that that's going to be just critical, right? Um, yeah. doesn't, doesn't, throw, doesn't turn the ball over. Very rarely does he do that. Um, and, and, and more times than not, gets Wake into the right play. Yeah. Um, we've had, we've watched Vanderbilt stand here two weeks and I really can't tell you how good, not good. I know they're better. <laughs> I know they're, they're coached better, but I have no clue. Uh, I, I saw in person the Elon game last week and I don't know where is Wake Forest in your mind? Because they've, they've not been challenged yet this year and now they're getting their quarterback back. Where are they? How good are they? And where are the weaknesses? And could you tell if they've been corrected or not in game one? Well, there was some some concern after last year about defensive consistency. Uh, Wake wasn't a very good third down team on, on defense. They changed defensive coordinators. Um, now, in full disclosure, Brad Lambert, the new defensive coordinator, is a very good friend of mine, so I'm going to say good things about him. But he's an awfully good football coach. He, he and I met – thousand years ago in the early 90s, we were at Marshall together. He was on Jim Donnan's staff at Marshall, won the national championship at the 1AA level in 92. And then that whole crew went to Georgia for a time, as you guys know. Um, but Brad's been a head coach at Charlotte, started that program, and has also been back at Marshall as the defensive coordinator was at Purdue last year. Um, but he, he's he's another one of those guys, kind of like Clawson, 
Watson that understands the type of player it takes to be successful at Wake, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So I think Wake has amped it up a little bit, had a great fall camp. I I thought the defense was terrific uh, in its preparation, looked really good in the scrimmages, uh, very aggressive. Uh, they, they've really focused a lot on on a third down. I was anxious to, to see the first third down last week against VMI, and, and the Deeks got them three and out uh, to start the game. So that kind of helped and set the tempo a little bit. Um, and, and I think this has got to be a, a wake defense that, that turns people over uh, like it has consistently the last few years. So I, I think Wake Forest has taken it up a notch or two uh, defensively. We'll, we'll see. Certainly Vanderbilt uh, – is going to pose a lot of problems that VMI did not. Uh, and I think Coach Lee, uh, who's got a history, as you guys also know, with, with Dave Clawson, um, he, he's, he's got a much improved over last year. I, I don't think you can look at the first two games and, and, and not admit that Vanderbilt, at least the first two games out of the shoot, is an improved team. So, And I think Wake Forest is too. Uh, I think you know Hartman back Saturday, Ryan Smenda, the linebacker back. When you get two captains back, who didn't play the week before. That has to be a, a pretty big shot in the arm. I think Wake's a really good team, Watson, I do. Uh, they've been to six straight bowl games, won four of those. Uh, I can't imagine that unless something just crazy happens that, that Wake won't be bowl eligible again for a seventh straight year. That's never been done in Wake history. So wow. um, I, I think Coach Clawson's got him in a good spot. I think they're a really good team. I think they're as – deep as they have been in his tenure, as I mentioned earlier. So they can withstand a, a Nick here uh, and an injury there. So, I, you know, I think it'll be a fun game Saturday. I really do. A lot of unknowns, but I know that Vandy's better. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But uh, – uh, and, and early, right? What, 11 a.m. starting time, o'clock. I think? Yeah, yeah. I'll see you won't, sometime. Won't, won't take long to find out. <laughs> Stan, I'll see you sometime around 10, 15. I'll come, uh, I'll come up there, say hello. Thank you for you, doing this. Uh, great to see you, George. Uh, uh, you keep doing what you're doing and keep watching those, those guys in, char- in, uh, in line.